Hi, I'm going to do a little wrap up and what's coming up thing on all my different uh, challenges that I inadvisedly, regretfully took on and now I feel like I'm falling down on all of them. I think this happens to a lot of uh, new tubers, I almost said. I guess that's probably a neologism that somebody uh, thought of before. Anyway, new booktubers and even old ones hear about it all the time. Um, I'm still working on the No Place Like Rome challenge for which I'm reading The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire which is six volumes. I read the first volume uh, early last month and I haven't gotten back to it since so that's what I need to get back on before the end of the month. I hope to have it to do at least one volume a month. Each volume is like 600 pages. So, no progress on No Place Like Rome. Uh, scant progress on the 100 book challenge. That is where, of course, you read 100 books bef uh, that you own before you buy anything new. I'm also including on that not downloading anything for free, new, that's not already on my Kindle because I have billions of free books. The most recent book I finished in that, which brings me up to 12, is Adventures of an American Girl in Victorian London by Elizabeth L. Banks. Just finished that this morning. Did a review of it, which is what I was originally planning to post, but it's 45 minutes long, so I was going to just include the review and tag on um, all this information I'm giving now, but it would have been crazy to add all that to one review, so that's going to go up on Wednesday. If you're just uh, thinking about taking some vacation time on uh, Wednesday would be a good day and then you can watch my 45 minute video about a book you've never heard of and probably don't need to hear about. I, I, I call it, it's worth reading. I finished, this week I finished, almost finished the Valentino mystery series. I have one final book to go in that series. I read the two books of Howard Andrew Jones's Sword and Sorcery series. Uh, about this character Hanover, who's a, 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 a displaced king who who brings who rebuilds his kingdom, rescues all his enslaved people, and it's a very good series. Um, a lot of people have done reviews of that, and Howard Andrew Jones is really a definitely in. He's been around a little while, but he's still. I would still put him in the uh, the up and coming category. Look at the zoom I'm doing here. Um, so those are recommended if you like sword and sorcery. I think a lot of people are are, are doing those books. They're very they're pretty much talked about in the uh, the world. The sword and sorcery is having a moment now, and I'm here for it. So I hope to be reading some more soon of different sword and sorcery. Okay, so what else do I have? I have I'm in the middle of a graphic novel. I forgot to do any much reading on it this week. I'll just add it in here with the stuff I'm, I'm still haven't finished. Red Sonia Omnibus. This is the Marvel character Red Sonia based on Robert Howard's work and she's a buddy of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, transferred. <coughs> she was uh, originally created by Conan. I mean she, she was originally created by Robert Howard. Red Sonia with a Y S-O-N-Y-A was created and I think she was in a story called uh, Black Volmia's Vengeance. Oh boy, if I get that wrong, all the, all the Howard stands are going to kill me. Or probably not. Um, you know, I just I just won't put Red Sonia's name in, in the description and no one will even know it's here. So, uh, this is anyway. Roy Thomas created, transferred that character from that story into the Hyborian Age when he started doing the Conan adaptions for Marvel Comics in the seventies. And ever since then, she's been part of the Conan universe. I mean, there's a there's a Red Sonia movie, and you know, there's the famous uh, chainmail bikini, which people have an issue with. But I'm going to be on PC and defend it because look at Conan; he's just as naked. If if Conan can fight with uh, no clothes on, then Red Sonia should be able to fight with no clothes on. It shouldn't be considered sexist for her to... You're just saying she's not a tough 
uh, as warrior as Conan, if she she's not able to defend herself without armor, because Conan can defend himself without armor. So um, they're both sexualized characters. Anyway, uh, I started reading that the art. Uh, much of it is by Frank Thorne, who's a th fantastic artist, one of my favorites. So maybe I'll get back to that, or maybe it'll just expire on its own, and I won't renew it. Who knows? Um, what other events? Okay, so... Oh, there's... <clears throat> Spring into Adventure. I guess I could also count those Howard Andrew Jones books for Spring into Adventure, um, since they are adventure stories, sword and sorcery stories. Next week, or the next phase of that challenge, I believe, is to watch some media or or comics or something other than a prose uh, work of fiction. I'm going to be watching 1938's Robin Hood with Errol Flynn um, and Basil Rathbone and Alan Hale Sr., if you're watching, if you happen to watch Robin Hood or any movies from this, and see a guy and look at him and think, it really looks like Skipper from Killian's Island. How can that be the same guy? Well, it's his father, and they are very close, close alike in appearance. Anyway, I'm really excited about that. I a couple times I tried to watch it this week, but I, I couldn't get around to it. I have a short video coming up about a few episodes of an old. Um, 50s anthology series, mystery TV series called Four Star Playhouse, which has um, some cool stuff. So that's coming up. I think that's going to go up on Monday. Uh, somebody was nice enough to tag me. Um, so I'm going to do that tag vi video for Tag Tuesday. And so that so means I've got a short one coming on Monday. A tag, I don't know how long that'll be on Tuesday. And I've got a 45, 50 minute review of my People in April book, uh, Adventures of an American Girl in London. Then I've got Rogers Sheeple Book Club, for which I will also be uh, reading a book that, that I think would count towards the Spring into uh, Adventure ch uh, Challenge. <clears throat> and that's Captain Blood, which is coincident not coincidentally, yes, coincidentally also a Errol Flynn movie. Uh, was made of it that is very famous uh, by the same director as and you know same team and everything as as did that Robin Hood movie I'm gonna watch so I'm looking forward to Captain Blood very much that's gonna be the next thing I read I think and audiobooks since I was not feeling well as I constantly have to remind everyone so they'll feel sorry for me I spend a lot of time not reading I for my and I spent, uh, and I worked on my Spanish, so I combined those two things to do, I don't know if you can see that, Rebell Re Re Rebellion in la Granja, uh, that's a translation, a Spanish translation of George or Orwell's Animal Farm, which I remember well enough to, to gain some, you know, I read it in high school, um, but I recall enough of it to um, sort of follow along with the audio uh, only book. I don't remember how I came across this at the library. I just thought, eh, this is short. I can listen to this on repeat for a while. And um, it's interesting, you know, even in high school, I, I understood the allegory and all that of what it's about. I didn't realize until this time, though, because of the introduction in here. Uh, that it was a direct. I knew. I knew it was an allegory about the Soviet uh, Revolution or the, the the Soviet Union under Stalinism, especially under Stalinism. I didn't realize though that the characters were, uh, you know, of the characters of Napoleon and Snowball were directly modeled on uh, Stalin and Trotsky. Um, I thought it was uh, more general, and maybe it is supposed to be general in 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 more of a sense. I think people know enough about Alan Farm that I don't have to explain it to them. Um, you should read it if you haven't read it. It's only uh, 
three hours audiobooks, so that's probably like, you know, 150 pages or something or, or less. It's, it's a very depressing book. Um, you know, I guess you would call it an anti-utopian book. The, the premise is that uh, this English farm, which is taken over by the workers, quote-unquote, in a sense, you know, the animals take it over, throw out the, the capitalists, which would be the, the farmers, uh, the farmer, and uh, they try and run it as a collective, and their idealism gets dashed by, by the um, most intelligent animals at least, you know, or I don't know if they're considered more, well, pigs are considered among the most intelligent animals. What I'm trying to say is, I don't know if Orwell's trying to say that, well, obviously the most intelligent animals would exploit the less intelligent animals. But anyway, the, the, the pigs are the, are the symbol of the, um, the party, for example. They're the intellectual class that are running things you know, ostensibly for the people, and the people are the other animals, the, the horse and chickens and, you know, all that stuff. And they have a lot of philosophical discussions or like, are, are, are rats their comrades? And they decide yes. And then they, they, uh, they talk about, they have slogans like, uh, uh, Two feet, no. Uh, four feet, yes. Or, or it's like, or at least that's how it sounds in Spanish. It's like a um, C or no. Um, you know, two two feet, two feet good, uh, two feet bad. Four four feet good, two feet bad. Like meaning that like we're animals. We are on four feet generally. Although we'll also in grandfather in chickens and stuff like that who really don't have four feet. But anyway, they have these kind of discussions and. Then the pigs start to walk on two feet, and um, that kind of thing goes on a lot. And there's, uh, um, as things go on, you start to see that the pigs in become the new ruling class, and they exploit the, and they're just as bad of exploiters. Uh oh, spoiler! As the capitalists, as the human farmers are. So, you know, obviously by that point in his life, um, this book was originally written during World War II, but he could not find a publisher for it because people didn't want to write. P publishers didn't want to uh, publish a book that was critical of the Soviet Union during uh, World War II because they were our, we were allies with them. So it was published in 48 or 47, 48, something like that. You can see that Orwell by this time in his life was very uh, disappointed in socialism. He was a socialist, and I mean, he was very disappointed in what had happened in the Soviet Union. You can read that in 1984 and in this and in uh, his later writings. Anyway, then I have to read uh, Vamp. I still have to go. This is the final one in the Lauren D. Estelman's uh, Valentino series. It just came out a few months ago, so it'll probably be the last one for a while. I like those books. I'm reading. I'm reading this slowly. I don't know if you can see this here. Okay, it's called Oh El Tonel by Ernesto Sabato. This is a book that often shows up on lists of the easiest Spanish books to read. Um, you know, it's written in a very simple, direct. Um, Format. It's very existentialist. It was often compared to *The Stranger* by Camus. It reminds me a bit, also, of uh, the voice, and it reminds me a bit of Humbert. Humbert in *Lolita*. He's a pretty despicable person. The person who narrates this book, who who commits a crime and is not and is con and. And it's a very famous crime. It's a novel. It's a very famous crime. Uh, by the time we start the novel, then he and he's like writing his confession before, and so he makes no bones about what a shit, evil, shitty person he is. But it's a it's a compelling novel. He, you can get it in English too. It's very short. I think. 
it starts out, he becomes obsessed, he's, a, he's an artist, and he's, he hates everything, and hates everybody, and he hates all the other artists, and he just hates blah, 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 you know, he's a very an unsufferable artist guy, and he sees this woman, you know, and he, and he goes, he's, he, he has a painting of his in, in, a, in a show, in a public show, a group show, I think, and he's got a little uh, part of the painting, like an un, un, um, unobtrusive part of the painting is a, is a, is a window in a, in a house, and he sees this woman really focusing on that part of the painting, and he, he becomes obsessed with her and wants to know why she's focusing on that and she doesn't really have that much of an answer for it and that kind of uh, sets him off. It's a, it's, it's an interesting book. And I started reading, this was recommended, I got this recommendation from Michael K. Vaughn's channel, The Broken Sword by Paul Anderson. I always say Paul Anderson, but the audio, I have an audio book and the reader is saying Paul, 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 pronouncing the O and U separately, so I don't, I don't know. The Broken Sword, it's so good. And I, um, I have to get it back soon already. I, I only had a ch chance to listen to it partly one night after I uh, played through Animal Farm, but it's about, I can't believe I've never read this book over the year. I knew it was a, a favorite of Michael Moorcock's, and Michael Kivon has a, has a good um, video about it. Hopefully I'll re remember to link to that. But it's about a changeling. It starts out, it's these um, Vikings. Um, this this Viking boy that is, for, well, there's a lot, for various reasons, these the elves, these, these elf people, these fairies, as they're called, elven folk, uh, pull a changeling thing and, and steal this um, Viking boy and raise him among their own. So, you know, it takes a, quite a bit to get to that that point, and then it's mostly going to be about this war and this this Viking boy, this young human boy who's going to be involved in, in the in the war between the elves and the trolls. I think, and it's so well written. Um, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm not usually a high fantasy person. I'm more, as I've said in videos, is like a literary fantasy person or a, you know, like something like Gorbengast or something like that. Or, or, or I'm a sword and sorcery fantasy, which is just the opposite, just the fighting and, and, and adventure. Um, this has got elves and trolls and stuff, like more like Tolkien, but... Uh, it's still a lot more um, down to earth than Tolkien is. So, have I got anything else? I think that's oh, 18 minutes. I really am going to keep it under 10. Oh well, that's my week. Talk to you again soon.